Hey folks, welcome back to the food shop. Today, let's make some very simple homemade bread, no need style, four ingredients, let's go. Okay, first you wanna start with one and a half cups of warm water. You want your water to be 110 degrees Fahrenheit or 43 degrees Celsius. And to that, let's add two teaspoons of active dry yeast. Give it a good mix, set it aside for 10 minutes to activate the yeast. This recipe calls for four cups or 500 grams of flour. Typically I use a bread flour because of the higher protein content, but you can use all purpose flour, it works just fine. Uh, next, I like to aerate my flour a little bit before I fill the measuring cup. Then I level it off with a knife, pour it into my sift, because I'm eventually gonna sift everything through, uh, which aerates the flour really nice. One teaspoon of a good quality sea salt I like to use, and then sift it all together. Nothing to it, piece of cake. And once you're finished with that, you wanna give it a good mix. You wanna really get that salt combined with that flour in there. Now let's add our yeast to our flour. It's been sitting there for 10 minutes activating. It's all nice and bubbly. Here's an antique. This guy has been around since the 80s helping me out. So I like to use the handle to start with my mixing. Um, it, it seems to go a lot easier and I don't miss anything. And it works great. But then it can only take me so far, and then I like to use a bowl scraper. I want to scrape down them sides, get all that flour, because baking is all about ratios and percentages, and you want to make sure you're using all your flour. And once you're done with your mixing, we want to cover it with a tea towel and let it proof for two hours in a warm location. After that two hours, your dough should have doubled in size. There's little air bubbles on the top, letting you know you're good to go. Flour your work surface, and then turn your dough out onto the work surface. Make sure you get it on the flour. I like to uh, spread it out kind of like in a rectangle and degas it. Next in shaping, you wanna bring the corners in and pinch them down to make a good seal. Do this with all four corners. And I like to roll it into a little bit of a log, sealing it along the way. And then I'll take a bench scraper and I'll start to form it into a ball. And then towards the end, I wanna pull the dough towards me to stretch the outer layer this will help form a nice crust during the bake. Next, we're gonna to wanna to transfer that dough into a bowl lined with parchment paper. And now here's a good tip for you. Take your parchment paper and crumble it all up. It makes it fit into the bowl much nicer. Transfer your dough onto the parchment paper. Get yourself a nice clean bowl. Transfer that right in there, it fits really nice. Ready to go. Let's cover that with a tea towel and we're gonna let that rest for another 30 minutes. Now, when your 30 minutes are up, use a lame or a sharp razor and let's score the loaf. Don't be afraid to cut into it. You can always tell a nicely proofed loaf when it splits really nice. Now let's transfer our loaf into our preheated Dutch oven. Be very careful here, it's very hot. Use oven mitts for this. Parchment paper and all. I like to spray it down with a little water, but that's really not necessary. Make sure the lid goes on into the oven, 450 degrees for 30 minutes. Now, after 30 minutes, we want to remove the lid and the parchment paper. We're partially baked right now. Things are looking good, but we want to keep that lid off and then we want to take the parchment paper off. We're going to put it back in the oven for another you can go 10, 20, even up to 30 minutes, depending on how dark and crispy you want your crust to be. Back into the Dutch oven, no lid. I went another 15 minutes on this one. Now we're looking for an internal temperature of about 200. And we're there, this loaf is finished. Now I'm gonna transfer it onto a cooling rack and allow the loaf to cool down completely before I slice into it. Now just remember that the loaf is continuing to cook once it's on the cooling rack. If you cut into it prematurely, your crumb or your interior is gonna be all gummy and it's not gonna be very good. So be patient, allow it to come down to room temperature before you slice into it. And there you have it folks, nothing to it. Homemade bread, no need, four ingredients, perfect every time. If you found value in this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe, and your comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.